Hey guys, welcome back to Flash Tutorials with Alan Becker. Uh, today we're talking about special effects, including laser beams and energy balls and ice. So, um, um, it's each special effect has its own strategy, and of course you can do each one in many different ways. In this tutorial, I'm just going to show you what I did for my um, special effects. Uh, we're going to start with the laser beam. So, um, in Animator vs. Animation 3, I have this really good-looking laser beam that, you, of course, you can't see animating right now because it's a movie clip, which which animates independently of the timeline, but it will animate once you export it. Um, I did the... Uh, I did the laser beam in a different way in Animator vs. Animation 2, if I can find it. Yeah. Um, this version was actually really dumb, uh, but it's just lines, and for wherever it hits, I make some fancy little graphics. But you can do it like this, but it doesn't look as bright because the light itself is darker than the background. So what I did in um, this version, it's completely white and there's like a glow of yellow, uh, of red behind it. So to do that, you what you have to do is um, make a movie clip and fill it with some jumbly lines. Here, let me find it. Okay, so if I double click it, you find that it's just made of jumbly lines that you can make really easily and quickly. You see two layers here. One layer is actually for the glow that comes out of his eye that animates to get a little bit brighter every two frames. And then the other animation is just the uh, the lines that are random. So let's make our own laser beam really quick. Okay, so I have blank canvas. So I'm going to insert a new movie clip. I'll call it laser beam. Okay, so um um it's going to be white, but we're going to so that we can see it, going to make it black. It helps to have a tablet, but you don't have to. Um I'm going to start let's say going up down. So let's say this is the center point and we're just going to make it really long and jaggedy. Um, I think I want it to be more smoothed, so that it'll be like, yeah, like that, like gross. So we'll just leave that one like it is, and then hit F7 to make a new blank frame. And since I want to know what it looked like before, I'm going to hit the onion skin. And then I'm just going to make another ugly random line like that. And F7, another ugly line, maybe one that's kind of more straight like that. And then like that, and like that, and some that are completely straight, some that are like grossly jagged, and that should be about enough. So we've got our thingies, and it looks nice and ugly. So, um, now to change the color, I'm going to click Edit Multiple Frames, drag this slider all the way out, hit Control A to select all, which I could just do by clicking and dragging and do that. So, I'm going to change it to white. Now I can't see it, but that's okay. So, now I just drag my laser beam onto the stage, and then what I want to do is add a glow under um, the properties of the item. If I click on it, property should pop up and down here you click glow. And it's automatically red. So maybe that's why I made it red. Maybe not. Um, so it looks really small. So we want to change the strength to make it much stronger. So it's pretty strong now. But we want to change the blur also. If we change the blur, 
and it will look a lot nicer. I'm going to make the strength maybe about 300 and the blur um, maybe like 10. So right now when you animate it, it you won't see anything that's because it's a movie clip as I said before movie clips do not animate in a timeline but they will animate once you export it as a flash file so I'm going to go to file publish preview flash and then we'll look at it and that is your laser beam pretty cool and if you want to add one of those glowy things at the top or the beginning point you can I'll do that really quick so when we go back inside you can't see it because it's white but yeah so I think to help to see we're just gonna make a black background and oval tool and we uh, put an oval down on a separate layer over top of it and have the center be right where the center should be and uh, don't want lines on it right now I have the weird stippled line and give it a radial gradient change everything to white and then make one of them zero for alpha so as you see the, the grids appear because it's more see-through and you can't see it now but when you click outside it'll be like that so um, we want it to kind of pulse pulsate and get brighter and then dimmer so we're going to give it two more keyframes one in the middle and one on the end by heading F6 and on this one we want to bring the white out a little more can't see it again but it's a little bit brighter compared to this one whoa is it oh yeah really hard to tell anyway we're just gonna give it a shape tween and see how it looks huh oh what the looks like the end one is brighter so we're gonna switch those two make sure the middle one is the brightest one That looks nice. All right, so there is your laser beam. So let's get rid of this black background. Put it in the bed. Put it here. Wow, looks like it has a red glow by itself, and that is good. We want that. So let's preview it again. Mm-hmm. Yep. There is your laser beam coming out of a pulsing light point. So next we're going to do energy balls and these are a little bit more complex. So inside of Animated vs. Animation 3 this red guy has an energy ball that he throws. Like that and it explodes. So it has an animation that you can't see here but I, you will see when I go into it. it kinda um, boils within itself and the color of it gets a little bit more bright like a pulse like the other one like the other thing so how do we make one of these it's 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 kinda like similar to fire you have to uh, improvise kind of um, let's let's try let's try it so we have three layers here one layer is the random junk that goes around inside of it and then we have this layer which is a gradient that gets brighter and dimmer and then we have this which is kinda just the thing to make it blurry edged but 
Honestly, we don't need it because we could just do that with this layer because you could give it a blurry edge with the gradient here. But let's just make our own. So put you off to the side, make a new circle, and um, let's just give it a solid black color to begin. Hold down shift. And then we do not want a line. And hit F8 to make a new symbol. And we, w we do want it to be a movie clip because we want to give it a blur, which we can't do with graphic. And we'll call it Energy Ball. So, um, how do we start? Let's just give it a gradient, radial gradient. And uh, set these all to 100% to make sure there's no alpha. Actually, um, the middle point, okay, we want it to be orange ish. Then the outer, after that, we want it to be darker orange. And, and then dark, dark, dark. Maybe a little red. More like that. And then for here, um, okay, let's get rid of this one, add a new one so it's the same color. Change the alpha to zero. Okay, so when you click out, it is blurry on the outside, and that is good. So let's give it another frame, F6, and another frame in the middle, F6. And then in the middle, we want it to be a little bit brighter. So uh, let's move this slider a little bit out, and, and yeah, yeah, let's just let's just do that. Actually, let's make it a little bit more red. Yeah, let's see how that changes it. I don't know. I don't know. So let's give it a shape tween and just look at it. It could be more drastic. So let's make this a little bit brighter. Uh, it's already kind of bright. Let's make it more yellow and then make this a little bit brighter too. Wow, that's vibrant. Ooh yeah. Okay. Okay. We're we getting somewhere. Good. That is our first layer. Now we make the second layer. So this could get fun. Um, let's just give it a solid green for now. It's not going to be green when we finish, but uh, we'll change it later. We want to be able to see it. So I think what I'm just going to do is make some random crap, and then make another frame of random crap and then try to go in between them. I'm going to turn my smoothing back down to 50 because I don't want it to be that smooth. And uh, make the lines, make sure the lines don't all seem the same width or else it'll look like you drew it. That looks all right. Let's make a new frame with F7. And not paying attention to the last frame, try to make another one that's just as gnarly. And another one. And we'll just do three. Okay, that's kind of... That's all right. Let's uh, split these up. So we're going to want it to be, um, start like this, become this, and then become this, and then go back to this. So we're going to hold down Alt to copy this frame, and drag it to the end, drag this one to this side, and then drag this one here. OK, this could get fun. Make it a little more even, a little more even, and then and then, okay, I'm going to hit F7 right in between these two frames. And then we're going to turn on the onion skin. And then we're going to get to work. How do we go in between? I'm going to turn off this layer. Um, and then I'm going to bring this back here. So we have two frames to work with. Either way is fine. All right, I'm going to make my brush a little bigger because I'm zoomed in. I'm going to attempt to make it morph between these. Okay. It'll 
obviously be different for you because you are going to have different designs different gnarliness and maybe this line goes in between those two lines these two and then kind of flattens out to become that shape and then this one's also flattening out to become that shape and then this one is moving that way to become that shape it's going to be really weird okay um, okay turn off onion skin and see how that looks I'm going to hit comma and period to go in between yeah, all right, that's all right. Okay, so let's go to the next one. Hit F7 in the middle of these two frames, and then do that, and then onion skin, and then do it. Hmm. Okay, this one's very similar. Hmm. Okay, this shape is very similar to this shape. Let's just make it become that shape. And uh, this one similar to that shape and this one's similar to this shape alright this one's very much alright okay cool and now I want it to transform back into this one let's just give it another frame so we have an even amount in between each one. Onion skin and transform. Yeah, I don't know if it's gonna look good. You never know till you look at it. So let's play it. Hmm. Okay, so let's just work with this. Yeah, let's work with this. So now we have to go in between each frame. I'm just gonna go through it quickly. Probably speed up the video. All right, let's see how that looks. That is good. There's a little spot there to fix. All right, next step is different from how I did it here. I'm going I think I'm going to do something different right here. I actually fill it each one with its own gradient, but I'm going to put a gradient over top of it and then mask it which is a better strategy I think because you can change the gradient and then it would change it for each frame so I'll going, I'm going to make a new layer I'm going to put a oval on top of it and to make sure it's center I'm going to go to the center and then hold alt and then shift and then drag and drop and for this gradient, I'm just going to make it brighter than the previous gradient. So I'm going to make this say white, make this one say yellow, and this one orange. Like that. All right, so what do you do next? You go to uh, the layer, right click it, and click mask. And that didn't work. I did it wrong. We're going to undo that, switch the order of the layers, and then right click the top layer, which is the layer with the green stuff on it, and click mask. There we go. Okay. So I always get confused about which order the layers are supposed to be, but look at that. We made our own energy ball. I think it looks nicer than the old one. Quite nice. All right. 
so now we have our energy ball and then um, let's 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 publish it see what it looks like yeah it looks good so um, in this animation you notice that when he throws it there's a blur and that makes it look more realistic because it blurs everything that moves in real life looks like it's blurred so it's uh, very easy to do that if you want it to make if you want it to blur while it's moving you need to uh, give it a blur so I'm gonna put it on its own layer so that we can tween it I'm going to control X cut it and then control V paste it and um, go to the properties and then blur first I want to move it so F6 move right click classic tween make it go faster and make it stay at the beginning first or I mean sorry so yeah okay here it is so only while it's moving I want it to blur so um, I'm going to click the frame of the tween and then right click or click on this and then go to blur and then we have a blur we only want the blur to be in a certain direction if you're going down you want it to be in the y direction if you're going sideways you want it in the x direction and if you're going diagonally I'm sorry there's no way to do a diagonal blur but you doing the closest thing that you have is the best solution is actually see it's actually just a side to side blur even though it's going diagonally it still works so um, there well you still want it to be blurry here too so give it a blur here and um, you do want it to only be blurred while it's moving so this frame shouldn't be blurred so we're going to put a keyframe here put a keyframe right before it lands and then take away that blur on the first frame and the last frame so now it's just like perfect and then we can make it look even better by giving it an ease so um... that is motion blur if you want to make a stick figure blur while he's moving then you have to turn him into a symbol or a movie clip before you can actually um, make him blurry for example um, I don't know if you need an example it's pretty straightforward but if I have a stick figure and then all of a sudden he decides to um, move really fast oh his foot got really curly there in this instance we want to turn his moving body into a movie clip I'm gonna hit F8 turn it into stick blur and go to his properties panel and then click blur and then change it to only be in the y or the x direction and then of course we want it to move a little bit more than that so we will give him a tween maybe a little less than that and then classic tween isn't that something so now you know how to make people blurry to turn them into symbols first last thing I'm going to cover really quick is ice someone asked me about ice I totally forgot about it but it's relevant and the way I did it was extremely cheap and boring and you probably could figure it out yourself but let's look at it anyway 
So here he is uh, icing up the Firefox, and back back then I made Firefox just from drawing directly instead of making a symbol first and animating each body part. Um, but here's the ice. He does that thing, and then he does that, and then he falls over. He becomes an ice cube. So this ice is right here. And if I double click it, um, oh wait, let me go back. This ice is an animation that starts like that, becomes that, and becomes that. It's really simple. Um, the only tricky part is drawing it, which isn't that tricky. Um, what you do is you take the pencil tool and uh, you make a jaggedy shape. And then you just uh, draw in spaces where you probably think the cracks or the, or the, the facets of the shape would be. And just draw lines like that maybe a jaggedy line inside of a jaggedy shape make sure the lines are closed and um, such this one is going to be alright so once you have that you just fill it in with one of three colors maybe I'll just pick the colors directly. I'll pick the middle color, which will be that, and that, no, I don't know about that, and that, yeah, and um, I'll pick the darker color, make that the behind part, I don't know, and then the light color, put it on there. Um, maybe this is like that. And looking at it again, maybe this one should be bright also. There. And then what you do is you double click the lines, hit delete. And there you go, you got your own ice. And um, all I did was I made the first ice, and then hit a new frame, made the second part of the ice, and then like that. Um, for the snow, it was really easy also. If I click on the snow, it's actually a line and what you can choose is the stippled effect here under the line so you go to pencil tool and you make it white make the stroke width like three and then hit stippled if it was a hairline it would just look like that so if I draw with it it becomes like snowflakes I don't know if you want to do that it's a very easy way to just make a bunch of dots and it saves memory probably because each one of these would be would have been its own little vector shape and it would have taken up a lot of memory so, but right now it's just lines oops so um that's how you make snow you just have to know how to animate it and it, it's just kind of a line winding around and it falls down really slowly at the end. I think there's a... I'm gonna try to make a, a cool looking ice effect here. Try to make it cooler than it, than it did before. And to do that I'm just gonna make ice first of all. And um, then I'm just... I'm gonna give it a kind of a tween so that it looks more like it juts out out of nowhere. So, do that. Oh man, I don't want this stippled. And give it some facets. Actually, yeah. And then fill it in with blue. Yeah.
Okay, and then double click it all. Get out of it. That's that's okay. I think I'm gonna change the color of some of these. Like that. Mm. I just want the colors to be more even, more evenly distributed. Okay, that's all right. So we have our ice shape, which I'm not really proud of, but um, we take it and make a movie clip, or actually just a graphic out of it, called ice graphic. And um, yeah, let's um, put let's make two of them. Control C, Control V, and put them on separate layers. I could select them both, holding down Shift, and then right-click, distribute to layers, and then they become on their own layer. And uh, do that. Make one of them smaller. I'm gonna click Q, and um, make sure the anchor point is at the bottom, and hold down Shift, make it small. And this one also. I mean, they're both gonna start out small. So I'm gonna put the anchor point at the bottom make it small. And then to make the ice effect we want them to just come out of nowhere and get big. So one of them is going to be really big. Uh, this one is in front so it's going to be smaller. I'm going to hide it so I can see the other one. And this one's going to be big. Um, yeah. So when I give it a classic tween, it should look like they kind of grow. Um, and one of them should gr grow at a different rate. Oh, okay. Um, the smaller one should start later. Like that. And they should have a, a, um, an ease on them, actually. So I'm going to go to this frame. Hold, um, drag over both of the frames so you edit both of their easings and then ease out because we want them to gradually halt to a size that's ideal so when I move this one over like that it should look more like it's separate from it and then it's freezing something is just freezing um, Oh yeah, in here you notice that the ice is slightly transparent and that is really easy to do. You go to the properties and go under color effect style alpha, click on it and then change it to like 50 or 60. Same with the other one, change the alpha. 50 or 60. And make sure that the other frame is also set to the same alpha so that it looks like it. There we go, we have some ice. We have some ice. Ice is nice. It might even look better if we had more than one of each so that they're a little separate from each other. So, um, let's see. I'm going to duplicate these frames. copy frames, make a new layer, and then paste frames. So now I have the exact same symbols in the exact same frames, and we're going to offset them a little bit by rotating. And the other one's going to rotate also. Let's see how that looks. Oh yeah, there we go. That's what we want to look at. So yeah, that's good. Um. And I also want to give it some like snow particles coming out of it, so let's give it another layer, and or just just for a a black background sake. In fact, I can just change the background of the stage by going to the properties of the stage by clicking on it, and then go to stage background color, and then there. Okay. Let's let's um hide this. Make sure you can see that the whole time. F five, and then give it a new layer. And then let's do the thing with. Um, no, let's not do the stippled thing. That's not going to work. Let's use the paintbrush. 
change the color to white and um, make it really small. We're just going to make little snow particles by hand. And I'm going to go click F7. And as it's getting really big, we want to just give it a bunch of snow particles. So let's just zoom in. It doesn't have to be that small. Okay. So let's put little dots everywhere. And I'm just going to make the color alpha a little less, like 60, just like the, the eyes. So it's a little bit paler, maybe less than that, 50. Okay, so we have our empty frame here, and we just click a bunch of little things. Actually, let's do one particle at a time. I think that's that's better. So F7 each frame, and um, onion skin, and then we're going to lock these fr these so that we don't have to see them. And we see this frame, and we give it a new a new dot. F7 again, new dot. F7 again, F7 again, and then. And then it slows down slowly. And then becomes small. I wish I could. Yeah, I'm just going to make it small here. There. Uh, okay, and then we have our frames here. We're just going to go on top of them with the comma and plus. Like that. And. Um, just drawing on each frame. So dunk, 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 dunk. You want each one to start really fast and then get slow. And then just slowly move to a stop and then get small. And okay, we're done here. And maybe we'll add some extra frames just because we want extra frames. Alright, let's do the same with another one. And another one that maybe we'll make it start a little bit earlier. F7 here. And it's like right there. And then. See how fast you can do it? It's really cool. Let's just play it to see what it looks like. Yeah, that's what we want. And if we have enough of these little dots, it'll look really good. So I'm just going to keep doing some more dots. F7 over. No, not not F7. Comma and plus. I'm using the. No, not comma and plus. Comma and period. Um, let's start here. Comma and period. Maybe start here. And maybe start here. Oh, we have to add a new frame here, F7, and then period. Yeah, I found out that just making it small from the beginning is actually better than starting with a big brush and then moving to a little brush, because you can just make it big with your little brush. So there. Okay, let's see how that looks. There we go. We have a fancy schmancy looking ice effect. And you learned it right here at Alan Becker Flash Tutorials. So um, now that's how you make a laser beam, an energy ball, and ice explosion as well as a motion blur for your stick figures. 
Alright, I'm glad that you guys are learning from my tutorials. If you have any other questions, contact me through my website. And if you haven't already, subscribe please, because that's nice. And um, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys later.